Hello everyone, so today I have another really interesting question for you and you're going to be reviewing functional equations and in this video again um, I'm just going to review some basic substitution strategies and see how we can actually reduce a really complicated looking expression really like so seemingly unsolvable functional equation and you can easily solve it using some, some simple steps. So let's begin. This is the problem number three from the round two of the British Math Olympiad in 2009. And in this video, we're going to be learning about functional equations, um, the substitution strategy in functional equations, then you have certain book suggestions for National Olympiads, in more USAMO, British Math Olympiad, etc. And at the end, we have a similar but challenging problem. This video is sponsored by Chinta.com. Since 2010, Chinta has trained thousands of students from all around the world in mathematical olympiads, physics olympiads, computer science and informatics olympiads, ISI CMI entrances, and research projects for school and college students. Okay, so we need to find all functions mapping from real to real such that for all x, y belonging to reals, f of x cube plus f of y cube is equal to x plus y, f of x squared plus f of y squared minus f of x y. Now, well, how are we going to solve this? So, you know, there are obviously a certain things to look at. Now, probably there exists a solution which is probably like quite elementary. So, f of x may be a constant polynomial, f, f may be a constant function, f of x may be a linear function, uh, and so on and so forth. f of x may be x squared or something like that, something elementary, something not really complicated, maybe, right? Uh, the other thing that, you know, one of the things that you can start off a functional equation is, is with basic substitution. So just plug in x equals to y is equal to 0 and let's just see what we get, you know. So on the left hand side, we'll get f of 0 plus f of 0. On the right hand side, we'll get 0, right. So twice of f of 0 is equal to 0. So therefore, we get this very important result that f of 0 is equal to 0. And maybe we'll use it later on. So now that we have f of 0 is equal to 0, the most common idea, the most like natural idea that comes to mind for substitution, for the substitution, is to put x is equal to x and y is equal to 0. Once I do that, I get f of x cubed, right, plus f of 0 is 0, is equal to x times f of x squared. That's very important because now what I can do is uh, in the original equation, we had f of x cubed plus f of y cubed is equal to x plus y times f of x squared plus f of y squared minus f of x y. Right, this is, this is essentially what they had given us. To, given us. Now, if I replace uh, this f of x cube with x times f of x square, this is what I get. So this would be y times of y square. And if I just open this up on the right hand side, just expand this, I'll get something like this. Right, so now that we have this, we can actually just cancel certain terms from both sides. Uh, you have these two terms common. You also have these two terms common. So essentially now what's left is x times f of y squared plus y times f of x squared is equal to x plus y times f of x, y. And uh, that, that's quite an important result. And maybe we'll use that later, right? Maybe let's just keep it like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute x with the cube root of z and y with the negative cube root of z. Why am I doing that? Because I want to substitute in the original functional equation, right? I want to substitute in this one. And when I do that, I'll get f of z plus f of minus z is equal to zero. Because we have x plus y on the right hand side and here you can easily see that x plus y is zero. So therefore f of z plus f of minus z is uh, zero or in other words, f of z is equal to negative of f of minus z. So this we can say that f is odd function, right? f is an odd function. It satisfies the property of an odd function. Okay, great. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put x equal to x and y is equal to 1 in this equation, right? And um, when I do that, I get x times f of 1 plus f of x squared is equal to x plus 1 times f of x. Right, and uh, let it be that way. Now, what is the problem in this functional equation? Why, why is it like still unsolvable at, at this stage? Right, we have this f of x squared over here, and that's essentially causing the problem. 
right? We have f of x over here. Now, f of 1 is a constant, right? So it's not that much of a worry. We have f of x. If we could somehow just eliminate this f of x, we are done, right? Problem is right, literally over. So what we can do is you can substitute x with x and y with minus 1. Once I do that, I'll get something like this. x times f of 1 minus 1 times f of x squared is equal to negative of x minus 1 times f of x. I've essentially used the fact that f is an odd function as well. And once I add these two equations, let me just label them. So if I add these two equations 1 and 2, right, what will I get? I'll get 2 times x times f of 1. Now you see over here, the f of x squared terms get cancelled and that's really good for me, right? And the right hand side, I just add both quantities plus f of x. Okay, that's perfect. Well, this just gets cancelled, right? So, um, this, oh, I'm sorry. So, this gets cancelled with this, right? So, 2 times x times f of 1 is equal to 2 times f of x. Or in other words, you know, f of x is equal to x times f of 1. So, well, f of 1 is going to be constant. So let me just label that as c. So, therefore, f of x is equal to cx. And yeah, like I had said initially, maybe f of x is just a simple function, like it's an elementary function. It's maybe linear, it may be a constant function, something like that. And yeah, it did. It did turn out to be a linear function. So that was that was really interesting. Now, well, the only thing that is left right now is to find out the value of c if we can. I'm gonna leave that to you. Um, what you gonna say? What you would essentially do in the exam is you would just plug in this solution f is f of x equal to cx back into the original functional equation and see for what values of uh, c it holds. In reality, it actually holds for all values of c, right? So this is actually holding for all values of c, uh, uh, right? So um, maybe we can just verify this. We can actually verify this. So uh, let me just plug in plug it back into the functional equation. So we had f of x cube plus f of y cube is equal to x plus y times f of x squared plus f of y squared minus f of xy, right? So just to make things a little bit simpler, f of x cube would be nothing but c times x cube, f of y cube would be nothing but c times y cube, and f of xy would obviously be c times xy, right? And if I just plug it back into the original equation, I would get c times x cube plus y cube on the left hand side. On the right hand side, I would get um, x plus y times f of x squared, which is cx squared plus f of y squared, which is cy squared minus f of x squared, which is cxy, right? So you, if you actually see the left hand side and right hand side, both are equal. Why? Because c times x cube plus y cube is equal to, I can take c common from here. That leaves me with x plus y, x squared plus y squared minus xy. And this is nothing but the factorization of x cube plus y cube, right? So c of x cube plus y cube is equal to c of x cube plus y cube. So therefore, the solution f of x equals to cx holds for all values of c. And I think that's where you'd stop. So that was a really interesting problem. Again, like I said, we did not use any fancy methods other than the simple substitution strategies. And that's probably a very important takeaway that whenever you're faced with like a really complicated looking functional equation, it probably has a very elementary solution. It's probably just involving substitution strategies. So yeah, substitution strategies are always a good way to start off a problem. Right, so after that, we have certain book suggestions. We have the IMO Compendium, Polynomials by Babiu, Elementary Number Theory by Sierpinski, Graph Theory by Harari, Combinatrix by Brualdi, Secrets and Inequalities, Functional Equation, How to Solve Them by Christopher G. Small, and Principles and Techniques in Combinatrix. Now at the end, we have a similar but challenging problem. And again, this is again just involving basic substitution strategies. Uh, although it can be solved by other methods, but the easier solutions exist using substitution strategies. So try this out, do try this out, and let me know if you're able to solve it or make any progress on it. And until then, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. The programs are designed for students who are passionate about mathematics. And they are personalized with one-on-one -on -one training, individual evaluation, and remedial sessions. The reason Chinta students are successful over the last 10 years because they are taught by mathematicians and real Olympiads from leading universities in India, United States and Europe. Some of our students come back to teach at Chinta from Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard, MIT, UCLA.
ISI, CMI, IITs, TIFR and IISC. For more information, visit chinta.com.